Google Classroom is a new free tool by Google designed specifically for educators that Jeffco has recently turned on. A couple of the things you can do in Classroom might remind you of some things you can do in Schoology. However, Google Classroom is definitely not a full LMS like Schoology is and is not designed to replace Schoology, but it's a really handy work collection tool, especially if you are using Google Docs with your students that you may want to be aware of. And those of you who find Schoology to be a bit overwhelming and a lot more than you need might find the tools in Google Classroom a really simple, streamlined way for you to get work to and from your students. It gives you a lot more functionality than, say, just posting items on a website. In this video, I'll just really quickly touch on the differences between Schoology and Google Classroom, and then I will show you how to set up Google Classroom and assign and collect work. I don't see a whole lot of people who are currently using Schoology wanting to switch over to Google Classroom, but you may want to add it as an enhancement to what you're already doing in Schoology. Both Schoology and Classroom allow you to create and collect assignments from your students and post announcements, although the announcements feed in Google Classroom is not quite as robust as Schoology. One of the really cool things that Google Classroom does is when you are assigning and collecting Googly items like Google Docs or Google Slides from your students, it will automatically make a copy of those items and adjust all the sharing permissions for you. Now in Schoology, students don't need to share their items with you. They can just submit it automatically and you get a view only copy, but Classroom will actually automatically adjust sharing permissions when students turn work in. It creates a nice folder structure also by course and assignment that I'll show you. Schoology does not do this, however, students can always get to their Google files within Schoology and submit them without having to adjust sharing permissions. One of the really cool features in Schoology that I love are the online grading tools. Rubrics is a tremendous time saver. You can annotate student work. You can add voice comments. That is all missing currently from Google Classroom. Schoology also has a really robust quiz tool and discussion tool that you're not going to find in Google Classroom. And a distinct advantage Schoology has over Classroom is how much easier it is to copy content from one of your blocks or sections to another block and from year to year. Right now in Google Classroom, I have to create the assignment in each of my separate sections or run one humongous classroom section of all my students, which might make it challenging when you're trying to transfer those grades into campus. With Schoology, it's just a click for you to copy things from year to year or section to section, and you can also share them with your peers much easier. Right now, pretty much your Google Classroom is your Google Classroom, and you can't just share the content on bulk with someone else or with other classes. And then some of the really fancy tools in Schoology are definitely not in Classroom. The analytics tools that show you when students logged in and what they did. There's no gradebook feature in Classroom. Schoology comes with a calendar, a lot better content delivery where we can embed YouTube videos and they're not blocked by the filter. There's some grouping tools that allow you to differentiate content and all sorts of stuff you would expect from a full LMS. And Google Classroom's not designed to be a full LMS, but it's a really, really handy tool that you might have a need for, so let's take a look at it. I'm showing a split screen so that I can demonstrate how Classroom looks to a teacher and to a student view. So, but we'll start with teacher view. To get to Google Classroom, you can go to the Google Apps login page of Employee Connections, and you'll see a link to Google Classroom. Alternately, you can just type classroom.google.com and bookmark that. The first time you arrive, you will be asked to sign up essentially and to register and to indicate whether you are a teacher or a student. Make sure your students choose student, otherwise their accounts will essentially be locked. It does take up to 24 hours to be approved as a teacher. Let me go to classroom.google.com from my daughter's perspective, and you'll see the difference between teacher and student view. On my side of the screen, when I click plus, I have the option to join and create a class. Students, on the other hand, only have the option to join a class. So because we have to make sure our students aren't joining as teachers and creating their own classes, you will need to allow up to 24 hours for Jeffco to verify you really are a teacher. It tends to be running about I don't know, one to three hours, but give them some extra time just in case. You know, that's one time setup you'll only have to do once. Again, when your students get to classroom.google.com, make sure they choose student role or there will be all kinds of delays in getting their accounts to work. Once I am at my classroom dashboard page from Teacher View, to create a new class, I just use the plus button and I'll choose create class. Class and name. And then you can use the section to designate your different blocks. I'll just choose this as English 7B, and then choose Create. 
Google will randomly pick a little theme for your class and you can change that by choosing select theme or you can upload a custom photo. We'll go with one of these standard themes. To add students to your class, you can either manually add them by going to the students tab and sending them an invite invitation or I think it's a lot easier just to go back to your stream and you'll see this code, this class code, and you'll just need to give this to students. You can post it on the board and then students from their classroom page can use the plus button and enter that code to join your class. So now my daughter sees my English 7 class and if I go to my students tab from my teacher view, I now see JC Johnson listed. To switch to any of my other classes, I just use the three bars at the top left of the screen and all of my classes are listed. I'm going to switch over to library because I have a little bit more stuff in there at the moment and I will again, as a student view, use those three lines and I can switch back and forth among all of my different classes. You can see teacher and student view look very similar. For right now, I'm going to focus on teacher view and show you how to post a quick announcement to your students. Choose the announcements option and post any reminders that you need to. You can see there's the option to attach a file from your computer or for Google Drive. You can put in a YouTube video. These will still be blocked by the filter. Google Classroom does not have the same special permissions at this point that Google Sites and Schoology do for including videos. So keep that in mind. Or you can add a hyperlink. When you're ready, just choose Post. Over on the right side of the screen from my daughter's view, she gets a notification that something has been posted to the stream. And if she clicks here, it'll essentially refresh her page and she can see the announcements. She also has an option to comment. Over in the stream over here on the left is an example of that. So here's an announcement I posted as a demo and JC posted, JC commented back to me, the filter is blocking this. And then I commented back to her with an alternate link with clean video. Now let's look at posting an assignment because this is where Google Classroom is really powerful and pretty cool. So I'm going to choose assignment, add a title and a due date. And now I'm going to attach a Google document that I want my students to complete. It's on my Google Drive, so I'm going to select that option and I will search for it. There it is, so I'll select that Google Doc. And now I have some options because this is a Google document. I can just allow students to view the file they could then make their own copy. I could allow them to all edit the same one, which would get very messy with 30 editors on this one document since I want them each to complete their own. Or I love this option with Google Classroom, make a copy for each student. So I'll select that option, choose assign, and then we'll take a look at this from JC, the student's point of view. JC can see the assignment and when it's due, she just needs to choose open to access the file. Over on the right, she can see she's not done. She hasn't even started yet. So what she needs to do is to open this file. Google's automatically going to create her own copy with her as an editor. And it will even adjust the name so that when she turns it in, her name is tagged into the title, which is great. So she is an editor of this and she can just complete her work on her own copy because Google's going to make each student their very own copy. I'm just going to change the color of this so that we can see it easily when it comes into me as the teacher. Notice at the top of her document is a new button that is unique to this assignment because I assigned it through Google Classroom and it's called Turn In. So when JC is finished with her document, she can just choose Turn In. Google asks her to confirm her work and she gets an assignment has been turned in message along with the word done. What Google has done behind the scenes is taken JC off as an editor of this document. So if she opens feature article analysis, which is still open in her tab, I'm going to refresh the screen here. She is now only able to view this because she's turned it into me, the teacher. I am now the editor of the document and she is only able to view it. So I back on her classroom assignment page, she can unsubmit it, which will notify me that she has chosen to make revisions. She can also add a private comment here to me as her teacher. And also if we tour into her Google Drive, we can see that a folder has automatically been created for her called Classroom. Inside that Google Classroom folder, 
are all of the courses she is currently a member of. And if I go into Johnson Library, there's that feature article analysis. So Google's helping her out with some great organization here as well, in addition to swapping the permissions automatically for me as a teacher. We go over to my teacher view, and now I can see that one of my students is done, and one is not done. So I'm going to click on the title of the assignment to see who is who. JC is done, Sadie's not done, and I haven't decided, assigned any grades yet. The points defaulted to 100. I think I'll just type in 15 points. Now I can grade JC's work right from this page just by clicking on her name and then her document. Alternately, you'll see that I have a shortcut link to a folder that Google has also automatically created for me. That'll open in a new tab. And this folder will contain all of my students' submissions for this assignment in this course. And JC never had to share this with me, but I am now an editor. I can type directly on the document. It's more likely that I will probably add my comments using the comment tool. There is no button at the top that says grade or return, so you do have to go back to Google Classroom for that. So here is the actual assignment page in Google Classroom, and I just type where it says no grade, and I'll type in her grade. I can grade one or several, so I could go on and grade Sadie's if she had actually turned it. And when I'm ready, I just put a check mark by all of the ones that I have finished grading, and I hit the blue return button. All of my students for whom I'm returning assignments will be listed here, and I can leave them some specific feedback that only the student will see. And then again, I need to confirm my action by choosing return. What Google is doing here automatically for me is again adjusting those sharing permissions. So if I try to open the document, and go into its permissions, I can see that I'm still an editor. JC is the owner now. And if we go into JC's view on the other side of the screen, we'll go back to her classroom view. She can see her score. She can see my comment. And when she selects the title of the document, now that it has been returned to her, she is now also able to edit this document. So upon return, we are both editors of the document. Because of how Google Classroom automates the organization and permission sharing of Google Documents, I think that's one of its biggest strengths. But let's go back and just wrap things up by looking at how you can assign something that's not Google related. So I'm back in my teacher view. I'm going to go back to the home page of the class as JC's view as well. And I'm going to create another assignment. And this time I'm just going to say, you know, watch this video. Can add in a due date. Again, I could say read this attachment. I could attach a Word document. Students could open and complete. I'm going to skip the Google Drive option this time, and I am going to put in a YouTube video. Now, even though the filter is in place, I can assign and search for a video. Students just won't be able to view it like they can in Schoology when I embed that video. But if they're watching from home, they'll have no problems, or I would have they would have to bypass the filter at school, or I'd have to use a clean video link. So I want them to watch this video. It's due tomorrow, and I'm going to choose Assign. So I don't have to just assign Google Documents. I can assign really anything, watching a video, completing a Word handout. If I go back over to JC's side, when she has this assignment, she's going to go ahead and open the assignment to view it. She has several options. She could add any kind of document that is uploaded from her computer, from her Google Drive. She can just create right here a document. Or if it's just something I want her to do, she can mark it as done. Maybe I had a little keyword I wanted her to include to prove she watched the video so she could put in the keyword here and mark it as done. If I scroll down through JC's stream from her classroom view you can see she has green check marks that indicate she's completed her work. Here's an assignment that she did not complete way back on August 12th and so it does show as late. In addition to these visual reminders, she's also getting some email notifications. So if I switch over to her email, all of the assignments are included. Whenever I return an assignment, it's included, and all of the announcements are also included as an email notification to her Jeffco Gmail. We've pretty much just explored the Stream tab of Google from Teacher and Student View. There is a Students tab. You can select several students and email those students. And here is where if you need to remove a student's ability to post and comment in the discussion stream, you can mute them. So you are able to mute a student if they abuse that ability to comment. 
The About screen is some information that you can fill in about your class if you choose to. And from the student view, that About information will be whatever you have entered. It also includes the folder where all of the assignments are located. There's a link to that and a link to your email. And there is a Classmates tab and students can email one another. So keep that in mind. That's an overview of Google Classroom. It's a great way to get assignments to your students and collect them back. It gives you a little bit more functionality than a website without being as overwhelming as a full LMS if that's just not something you're interested in. If you have any specific questions about Google Classroom, please come see me. This is a self-supported app, meaning the service desk will not be able to help you if you call or email them, but I am happy to do so.